Well, good morning, everybody. We're in Acts chapter 16 today, and this is an amazing chapter in, in the book of Acts. It turns out that the Apostle Paul uh, had decided, it, it, based on the past success that he's been having in, in this section of Asia that is now modern-day Turkey, that to continue to go to a bunch of small cities and, and some new small cities in that area. But every time he would go, somehow the door would be closed on him, and he couldn't figure out why. Uh, he had had so much success there. But listen to this passage uh, in verse 9 of what took place. It says, That night Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. Now, that Paul listened to God's change of plans for him was huge because Macedonia is in Europe, and Europe is a brand new, wide open mission field for them to go to. And so Paul comes to his very first city. It's a, it's kind of a major city. It's, it's the, it's the one called Philippi. And, uh, Paul and Silas and, and Timothy and Luke are traveling together, and they met some people by a river. And, uh, and it happened to be on the Sabbath. They were Jewish people and they were praying. And Paul tells them about Jesus. And one of them was named Lydia, who was a merchant of expensive purple cloth. Uh, the indication is, is that she's well off. She's a, she's a strong businesswoman. And she and her others, uh, she and several from their household are there and they all hear the message of Jesus, and they come to faith in Jesus. And since they're by a river there, they're baptized right there, then and there. And Lydia became a key supporter of the Apostle Paul and his ministry, and and and, uh, and she even knew, allowed her home to be used, and she gave lots of resources to Paul. Think about that. God had now planted a, the first church in Europe, and it was with the help of a, a, of a businesswoman. No doubt, this was a great day for Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke. God had opened this new door and this new place to connect with people, uh, and it, we, they just saw God at work. And so there was something only God could do, but there was more going to take place. So one day, soon after that, Paul and Silas were in the city of Philippi mingling with the people of the city, and a slave girl began following them. This, this, this girl was possessed with a demon, and we find out that uh, she was uh, she was actually owned. She, she had people that owned her, and uh, th th this demon gave her gave her the power to tell fortunes, and her owners were getting rich by taking advantage of her. The the girl was making life very difficult for Paul and Silas. We don't know exactly what it was, but but she was following them and 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 heckling them and 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 uh, and, and and just uh, just just disturbing them greatly. And so Paul turns around and he orders the demon to come out of her, and it does. He healed this young girl. Now her owners don't care about her health and her well being, but. Paul had messed with their income, and they very much care about that. And they were really mad. And eventually, with the help of a mob, uh, they beat Paul and Silas. They chained them. Uh, they chained their legs, and they threw them into a deep, deep, dark prison. Uh, now, my first reaction is, wow, things have changed from a really good time in Philippi to a very bad time. How could God allow this to happen to Paul and Silas? I mean, they, they were doing so much good. And in verse 25 of the chapter, we read, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Wow, that seems like an amazing fact, doesn't it? That, that when they were at their lowest, uh, uh, that's the time that they choose to sing praises to God. Uh, you might say, well, I, I certainly don't feel like singing when I'm at my lowest, and I want to tell you that I'm pretty sure that Paul and Silas didn't feel like it either. Uh, they didn't feel like it, but they knew that they were out of options, humanly speaking. And so their only hope was to let God work, and he does work. Please make sure you read the rest of the story because it's, it's an amazing ending. Now, 
I just want to comment on this, how this applies to us, because I think some of us might be in a uh, quote-unquote prison the, today. I, I don't know what kind of prison it is, but it could be a prison of anxiety or loneliness. It could be a financial prison. It could be cancer. It could be addiction. So many things can cause us to feel like we're in chains. And my question is today, I don't want to make make this more simple than, than, than it really is, more complicated than it really is, I should say. Are you making room for God in your life? You and I, there's so many things that we can't fix on our own. What, whatever it is that's causing you to be in chains right now. We must give God the freedom to work. And Paul and Silas sang because they knew it was beyond their ability and they wanted to let God uh, have full reign in their lives. And so today, my, my admonition to you is to admit your weakness, admit, admit that you need God, admit that you need Jesus in your life, and, and learn to sing, even when you don't feel like it, when you feel like you're in your prison. And God can do more than you could ever ask or even imagine. Uh, may God bless your day. Have a great one. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.